playing with the manual settings lets you have fun with various effects like white balance and exposure times. Using some ND filters gives you even more options as well as helping you take even better video. That is what I'm talking about today. I'm Ian and I play with drones and today I'm using the DJI Air 2S to show you some of the fun you can have with manual settings and more specifically with some ND filters. I should point out whilst I am using the Air 2S today uh, pretty much all of what I'm talking about in this video is going to be applicable to the Air 2, the Mini 2 and the Mini as they all have the uh, same fly app and they all have similar control over the camera settings so if you've got any of those drones watch on. Over the last few months though, I've managed to get away on a few different trips as travel opens up. Uh, I've been playing around with slower shutter settings uh, to get some more cinematic shots and some long exposure pictures. Now you actually have a fair few settings that you can play around with in manual or pro mode on the Air 2 and the Mini, but in truth, auto mode normally delivers pretty outstanding results uh, without the need for touching any of the settings. So you could easily ask, why bother? Well look, by slowing down shutter speeds, you can get more motion blur, which gives you some pretty nice effects, especially if you're near fast moving water. Having a longer shutter speed will smooth out water and increase the amount of white water to give silky smooth effect, both in video as well as still photos, as you can see here at the Gordafoss waterfall in Iceland. Heading there in the evening, the light was already fading, but using an ND filter to reduce the light even further ended up with a much slower shutter speed, giving me this lovely, soft, silky effect as the water cascades down over the falls. And early on this year in North Wales, you can see here how some of the still photos taken with a strong ND filter smooth out the water and you get this really lovely, silky effect of all the white water as it spans out from the falls. Now, most of you will have probably heard about ND filters and you will often see me including what filter I'm using on the outros of my videos as even when you're not filming waterfalls and streams, NDs help to ensure you get good cinematic video. Uh, there are plenty of videos out there explaining how NDs work and why you need them. So I'm not going to go into too much detail today, but uh, in a nutshell, ND filters will darken the lens, reducing the amount of light that gets in, which in turn means you need to have the shutter to stay open longer in order to get the right amount of light into uh, the sensor to take the picture or video. So quite simply, the darker the ND filter, the less light gets in and the longer the shutter speed that you can use. Now, the way that the Fly app works, when you fit a filter, the app will actually do all the maths for you and you can still take photos and videos without having to make loads of adjustments in the settings. It said it literally does all the work, you just fit the filter, point and shoot. But in truth, I always think it's a good idea to know what's actually happening and why. So for those of you that are interested, here is a two minute explanation on how and why uh, ND filters work. Both video and pictures are basically all about light and the amount of light getting into your camera sensor. And there are three things in your camera that will affect this. It's known as the exposure triangle and it is uh, literally the aperture, the shutter speed and the ISO. The aperture is literally how big the hole is that lets the light into the camera sensor. The shutter speed controls the exposure time and is quite literally how long the shutter is open and therefore how much light is going to be allowed onto the sensor for each picture or frame. And finally you have the ISO which adjusts the sensitivity of the sensor to light. So all three elements are directly related and when you increase one you normally have to decrease or change another value to keep things all balanced. A larger aperture will let in more light, meaning you can decrease how long the shutter stays open for. Likewise, in low light uh, you can increase the ISO to increase the sensitivity and avoid the need for very long uh, shutter speed which can sometimes result in blurred pictures. Now on the uh, Air 2S, the Air and the Mini and the Mini 2, um, the aperture, the, the size of the hole if you like, is fixed. The uh, Mavic 2 Pro and the Autel Evo 2 Pro both have variable apertures that you can increase or decrease. But as I said, the Airs and the Minis all have a fixed aperture. So that only leaves 
two sides of the exposure triangle to play with, the ISO and the shutter speed. Whilst ISO affects the sensitivity, it's also very easy to introduce a grainy effect if you start using an ISO value much above 400. And in truth, I hate using uh, an ISO value of anything uh, above 100. It all, 100 is always going to yield, I think, the very best results. And for the best cinematic video, there's a general rule of thumb, the 180 degree rule, that you need to have a shutter speed twice the frame rate. So if you're filming a video at 25 or 30 frames per second, you wanna have a shutter speed of around 150th to 160th of a second to get the right amount of uh, motion blur from, from moving subjects. So of course, as I said earlier, if you want a super long exposure to get the effect on waterfalls, you're gonna need to increase the shutter duration to a very slow speed. And so of course, there's the problem. If you've got a fixed aperture and you want to keep the ISO at 100, we're kind of only left with one other variable, the shutter speed. And so how can you actually change that single side of the triangle without messing up the exposure of the picture of the video? You cannot get a shutter speed down to 160th uh, of a second on a bright sunny day when it needs to be way faster than that to stop it being overexposed. And so, that is where ND filters come in. If you have got a fixed aperture and a fixed ISO, and you want a slower shutter speed, then you have to manually reduce the amount of light getting into the lens. And that is what an ND filter does. It is quite literally a dark piece of glass that uh, reduces the amount of light getting into the lens. ND filters normally come in sets, uh, you'll, they'll normally have numbers, uh, so the higher the number, the darker the glass. Each number represents how much light is reduced, so an ND4 uh, allows just one quarter of the light through, whilst an ND16 is only allowing one sixteenth of the light through. Now the actual strength of ND filters are based on those used for DSLR cameras and uh, they're, they're based on something called camera stops or EV or exposure values and basically one stop halves the amount of light getting through so you end up with one stop being achieved by an ND2. Uh, two stops would be achieved by an ND4 and three stops would be achieved by an ND8 and that is why you typically get ND filter sets spanning uh, ND4, 8, 16 or 32 which simply equates to two, three, four or five stops. That's the technical stuff and really all you need to know the higher the ND the darker the filter the less light coming in and the slower the shutter speed that's about it so as i said filming on a bright sunny day i find an nda or an nd16 is is usually enough but if you want to start playing around and get some special effects with uh, water you can take things up to an nd32 or even a 64. you can um you can also get variable nd filters that you literally slide and turn the dial to darken the filter like this one PGY Tech, uh, I use shot glass and it lets you vary it from two to five stops. So it is literally the equivalent of having an ND4 to an ND32 uh, in just the one filter. And finally, of course, you can get polarized filters. Now, these will cut down glare. Sometimes you want to cut down reflections, like if you're uh, filming down over clear blue seas. Polarized filter always reduces water reflections. And in this example, you can see right through down into the water. But I do find that at other times, you may want to keep those reflections to get the clouds. As you can see here, when I fitted a polarized filter, you lose the clouds and suddenly you just get muddy water. And sometimes obviously that's not what you want. Sometimes you want to see that lovely cloud reflection. So where you do want to see skies or clouds reflected in water, remember to make sure your filter is not polarized. Now, where you want to try and take still photos with a lot of silky water movement, then you may need to jump into pro mode again and manually set the shutter speed to make the exposure time quite long. Uh, if you're going to be doing that sort of uh, still picture, you want to go for the very darkest ND filter you've got and adjust the shutter speed down so you end up with a very bright picture on screen. Um, it means you've pretty much got the slowest shutter speed that you can get away with given the light and the ND filter that you're using. And as long as you don't go too mad and hopelessly overexpose the picture, you should be able to darken it slightly at the end and you then can end up with some lovely silky shots. That's why it's a good idea to play around and experiment. See how far you can get away with, see what works, and hopefully some of the end results will be what you're after. 
Anyway, look, that's pretty much all I wanted to go through today. Now you know how things work and how shutter speed, ISO and ND filters all interact. You should be able to experiment and have some fun. Um, obviously travel is opening up because I can't remember the last time I filmed a video in the garden with so many planes going over, but hopefully the uh, microphone hasn't picked them up too much. But look, anyway, look, as ever, give me a little thumbs up if you like this video and you think you find it useful. And um, of course, as ever, hit the sub, ding the dong to get notified when I next put something out. Either way, look, wherever you're traveling to this summer and autumn, I hope you get that perfect shot or clip. Either way, until next time, have fun, happy flying.